Hi, are you a trainer in a youth first field and uh, interested to learn something new or maybe improve your skills and knowledge? If any of these questions is yes, then uh, great. Uh, my name is uh, Domagoj and uh, join me today on the adventure called Coaching in uh, Youth Work. What is coaching and what are the basic skills in coaching? Why is it important that we as trainers cultivate them? Those are all of the questions to which we are going to get answers to in our next podcast. So stay with us. We are starting just now. In the introduction video, maybe you saw me uh, walking away and I was just running not to miss our talk with Darko Markovic and Lyman Ostraguaskas, who are freelance trainers and educators in the uh, youth work field. The talk which you will listen here will be revolving around coaching, development processes and coaching skills. And our insights are mostly based on the trainer skill workshop called Coaching Mindset and Coaching Skills for Trainers, which was organized by Salto Training and Cooperation Resource Center. So um, before we start, uh, I would I'm interested to talk a bit more about the connection between trainer and coaching role and mindset. So maybe Darko, we can start with you from your opinion. How does this uh, coaching mindset and role and trainer trainership role go together? Huh? Where is the connection be between these two, and uh, what makes them maybe closer or separate to each other? Thanks, Domago. I guess this is the whole uh, whole topic of the whole podcast, um, and this is exactly what our uh, our uh, workshop or skills workshop we call it training, but we we were a bit more modest in calling it a trainer skill workshop. Um, and idea there was is maybe this flip chart actually shows behind uh, me uh, was not really to focus on you know, 100 coaching tools that trainers can use or, you know, the, the best coaching skills for trainers. But actually, we wanted to really start from exploring what is it actually that uh, trainers can learn from coaching on a deeper level. Uh, so what kind of beliefs, what uh, kind of um, core beliefs uh, coaches have uh, about coaching, about working with the clients, about the uh, development process, about how the change is happening, and what trainers can learn from there. Um, and all, more or less in, in the whole course, uh, we are dealing with this kind of self-reflection about what is my uh, uh, trainer's mindset. Basically using coaching mindset as inspiration and looking at, okay, so what is my trainer's mindset? What I really believe about how change is happening, how learning is happening, what's my role in the change process of uh, uh, other people? And I think their uh, coaching mindset as a starting point uh, for inspiration, uh, I think could be a, a wonderful uh, place to to start and look at yourself as a trainer. Thank you, uh, Darko, for sharing. Limonas, maybe also uh, the same question for you. Uh, how do you see that these two topics connect to each other as well? Maybe if you have something to add. Well, I think Darko put it uh, uh, very well, really. We were looking at, uh, um, or in a way trying to bring participants in the coaching field, coaching world, take a look out there uh, and to see what is up there to learn and bring back to the training context. Um, and I believe each person took their own things, something that clicked for them or, or resonated. Uh, also very much depends what each trainer is doing and what formats they work. You know, do they do more long-term training? Do they do some coaching in between? Uh, or they work rather with the large groups. So it really depends, you know, what each person could, could take from that. But uh, I think the last workshops showed that people could really recognize, could recognize important things and could really take from the coaching field. And people were very positive and, and optimistic that it will be useful in their training practice. 
Okay, now when you mentioned this, uh, uh, why then we should develop coaching mindset and coaching skills as trainers as such? Huh? Uh, can it bring something additional to us? Or uh, I'm maybe just interested to find out a bit more about this. Huh? Yeah, I mean, we started this workshop in a very experimental way. And now after the three editions, we have, I think we have a bit more body of knowledge. And uh, I could also say that also ourselves, we in, in, improved our practice. And one thing I really had a feeling for the last time that actually the wave we've been uh, acting as trainers in this workshop was very coherent with the topic. So basically, I think what we did um, as a program for participants, we've been demonstrating in our in our own in our, in our own approach. So basically, training with a coach coach hat or training in a coaching style. Um, for me personally, uh, it's quite um, a liberating place to be because in a way it is uh, a lot about being present in the moment and not having everything predefined. So very often as trainers, we have lots of things which are predefined. We have predefined goals, we have predefined agenda, we have predefined methods, we have even predefined questions to ask people in the briefing. So. In that sense, I think coaching mindset, uh, embracing coaching mindset and, and reflecting about what's your coach position or let's say trainer position with a coaching head in this kind of learning relationship, I think it can be very liberating. Uh, and it actually, it comes really to the true um, and asking the true and the right questions in the right uh, moment. Uh, Lemlas, uh, maybe anything to add to this? Uh, why, why should trainers then develop the, the, the coaching skills and the coaching mindset as well? Well, first of all, I think these two fields are very much related, really, because it's uh, in a way a helping profession, both coaches and trainers, and I could add, you know, mentors and counselors, they do have a goal to help other people achieve their goal. And especially if we take a youth work field and non-formal education field, when um, ideally <laughs> learning is in the center, you know, then it, it many things from coaching field make sense in a training field. And uh, maybe some people even don't don't call it a coaching mindset or a coaching skill. You know, actively listening it has been all the time important skill for trainers. But I think it becomes especially important when it is truly learner-centered process in training. So what Darko is saying, right? If it's everything is predefined um, and you as a trainer just need to be there to deliver content to people and they, they need to absorb something from you and go away. Yes, maybe presentation skills are what matters the most. But if you're truly there for catering learning needs, learner needs, and learners also kind of develop their consciousness and awareness of what they want to achieve. Sometimes maybe they don't know how to do it. Uh, that's where I think trainer with the right mindset and skills can be a really helpful person. Yeah, I was thinking mm -hmm. maybe just to add that um, I was thinking very often we, we think about coaching as individual thing. As a, and most of the time, actually, it is. Although today we speak also about team coaching or group coaching um, in the coaching world as well, which is uh, growing. Uh, but for us, when we started the workshop, it was really the question. So we didn't want to really train people how to do one-to-one -one coaching with their participants, let's say, after the training sessions. So we go and maybe we continue some. I think that the, the, the bigger challenge for us there was how can you train the whole group? And actually, how can you balance and find this right balance between individual learning and the group learning process, having the coaching mindset? And uh, and in that sense, uh, I think it, it makes it very interesting because you are also following the individual learning path and how do you cater and how do you how are you useful for individual learning? And at the same time, how are you useful for a group uh, uh, group learning? Uh, and there, I I think the, having the right coach position or right trainer position in the in the learning process can uh, can 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 help a lot thank you for sharing this huh? and uh, throughout the training um, uh, you covered uh, in previous editions but uh, uh, also now uh, some of the core skills in coaching and they're connected with uh, being present uh, listening good uh, asking questions so 
Um, I would be interested maybe to, to uh, go one by one uh, and maybe discuss a bit more about these three important pillars of uh, coaching. Uh. So um, uh, why is it important for trainers to be present here and now when we are doing the training courses as such? Well, I think that's, uh, that's probably a condition uh, if you really are there to support uh, other people, right? Because in order to support other people, you need to be at that moment where people are, <laughs> be with them. And uh, I think other, other participants of the training, they also need to feel that they are being heard and understood. And I think then uh, presence, my presence as a trainer, full presence right there has a big potential to help people open up, to be more open, more honest with themselves. <laughs> um, and uh, I think the people immediately feel that, you know, I can hear them and I'm fully present and interested in what people are trying to tell. Um, and also talking about listening, right? That this, the listening, if we want to go beyond mere facts of what people tell, it requires uh, quite a deep focus and kind of feeling of what people are really trying to say. And if we oppose, you know, from presence here and now, being in your mind somewhere there. <laughs> At this moment, immediately you, you you stop being with the participant. You stop really hearing the, the story and all the nuances and what is not being said and what is maybe left between the lines because any kind of disturbance, um, you know, will, will be a barrier to really have that understanding of another person. Thanks for, for, for sharing with us, Darko. Maybe do you have anything to add to this? Well, as Lamar said, I think the presence is really the basic. We, I think we said if we need really to think about what are the three core skills that from coaching we can take, there will be presence, listening, and asking questions. And exactly in this order. So the order is right. I think that's the presence is the basis for, for, the, for, for, for the other two. And it's kind of checkpoint for you. As Lamar said, the moment when, you, when, you, when you're out of presence – you're losing the moment, you're losing the train. Uh, maybe you're losing the moment to ask the right question in the moment. Maybe you're losing the moment that could be a turning point for learning. Uh, so the presence is your guidance, kind of, it's kind of your inner guide. What are you supposed to do in this thing? So basically what coaching mindset is, I think maybe that's the biggest change that coaching mindset is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is making, if you ask what the difference is, is that... Uh, the, the, the presence is guiding, um, uh, is, is, is leading in, in, in taking where, where interventions are coming from. So you're not interve you're not interventions are not coming from your trainer script. So what you wrote, I don't know, two weeks ago that you will, it will happen on Tuesday in the afternoon. But really, like what's happening in this particular moment and where I see... Uh, invitation to respond and without presence this is impossible so i think presence is the core mm. yeah uh, thank you and uh, you said that, that the the core skills go in the in the sep like in separate orders in some kind of order huh? so that we have yes. this uh, presence then uh, listening then asking questions so i will now jump into listening part huh? so uh, i'm interested also uh, uh, how and why should we as trainers encourage uh, quality listening uh, for participants and what they're saying to us during training courses because i have the feeling that sometimes we just listen and then say ah okay let's continue huh? that we are not really listening as such hmm. yeah i would I, I would also reflect you know on, on that that sometimes it does happen because uh if you have a very predefined program and and, and times and so much content that has to be delivered you know, sometimes I get the feeling that I would love to give more space for me to listen more and more space for people to speak up of what really matters for them at that moment. But sometimes really it's so, it's so challenging to achieve in, 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 in training context nowadays when training is shrinking and number of objectives is increasing. 
So sometimes I find myself a bit uh, a bit trapped, you know, even though willing to show certain quality, uh, willing to be there for participant and her or his needs. At that moment, it 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 really gets tricky at moments. But of course, when I think when you can be in that moment and can uh, really feel what people are trying to to say, uh, I mean, I think listening is the kind of you know the step towards really already the change is already happening. I think because of uh, really being fully present and listening for what people are really trying to say i think it's already helping people to understand themselves a lot and it's a first step and you know we often in the training world um discuss and reflect about interventions and methods and and so on but i think that that really very much depends what you were able to hear through quality listening and if you just heard some facts and you stayed very much on the surface, it could be that your intervention will be really be like uh, not hitting the right target. And, and one thing, maybe Domago, one thing to add, I think when, very often when we think about listening, we think about ears. <laughs> but it's much more than ears. So it's, uh, I think one thing that we can definitely learn from good coaches is actually they also listen, not with their ears also, but with their full body. So basically, you you get all your reactions to what somebody is is uh, is uh, is telling you um, emotionally, in terms of sensing, in terms of body reactions, but also in terms of in terms of words. Um, there is one interesting coaching school which you, that talks about different kinds of listening, and there's one particular type of listening that they call focus listening, and this is this moment when, as we explain in the course. Um, when two people are sitting to in, in in this kind of interaction with each other, and if somebody else would come from the outside, it would look like as if there is an invisible bubble uh, created by the by 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 its quality of listening uh, above above these two these two persons. So it, in a sense, you you're in this kind of invisible bubble with the full presence uh, with your uh, uh, with the other person or with the group. And um, I, I know you will ask us about questions, but this is a good check uh, point also is that the, the, we had this whole debate about what are the good questions, uh, are, there, are there powerful questions in coaching or in training? And that's an interesting debate by itself. But the thing is that the moment when you start thinking too much about questions, and thinking kind of like a bit like, what's my next step? What shall I ask now? This is the moment where, first of all, you are not present anymore, and B, you're not listening anymore. So the good questions in training and in coaching, they're not coming from coaching books or from your trainer script. They're really coming from this connection, from the present moment, from the energy of the moment, from listening to what Lamana said also, what is not said, not just what is said. So from the moment the questions will find you so it's not just that you have to find a question and i think that also releases a huge pressure on trainers that they have to know that they have to write ask ask, ask the right questions but it's actually the opposite the moment is stay in the moment stay in the presence and the questions will find you Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, great. Thank you for this, Darko, because you gave me a great introduction about the questions as well, with what we ask on training courses. I have the feeling that uh, a lot of the times, two main questions are, uh, how are you feeling? How was this exercise for you? And etc. So what about these questions now when you were talking about them in training environment? environment are we overdoing some of the questions? Should we ask different questions? What kind of questions should we ask? Uh, maybe if you can give us your reflection on this as well. Mm -hmm. um, maybe I should continue which I was yep. talking a little bit about so even in coaching courses in professional coaching courses sometimes people speak about powerful questions and asking okay so what are these powerful questions and more or less the answer there would be the questions that are moving you forward the questions that open up thinking seeing other perspectives uh, questions that are motivating you and so on and so forth but what I like there is a guy who speaks about he said, it's not about powerful questions. It is about powerful questioning. 
uh, and exactly it's what I just said before. It's really the questions that are actually fitting the right moment, the right person, the right process, and also maybe hitting the potential there in the in 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 the story or in the relationship or um, in the, in the topic uh, that 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 we are de we are dealing with. And uh, yes, sometimes as trainers we have some um, habits, I think. Uh, and maybe even habits that we get become uh, victims of. Uh, so questions that, in order, kind of we ask by default. So it's not necessarily true that if after an exercise you have to ask question about how did you feel or how do you feel now, or what did you learn. I think these are the maybe two most frequent questions that we ask in training courses. But perhaps maybe they're not the most. Uh, powerful if you use this metaphor or maybe not the right questions uh, in this particular moment and there I think uh, having a coaching mindset and, and really listening what's happening uh, might lead you uh, and might actually help you the questions to uh, the right questions to find you mm -hmm. Thank you, Darko. Lionel, maybe something to add uh, about maybe questions that should we ask to participants while we are on training? What I took from the workshops that we were doing, you know, were, uh, yeah, stressing the fact a lot that uh, it's, it's not just about having a, a, a big list of uh, kind of moving questions and, and, and very good ones, but it's a lot also about uh, being aware on what level are you asking the question or what is the question about so actually what do you want to to achieve of your question so let's say we often ask people to reflect something when we ask question right that's the usual <laughs> trainers <laughs> kitchen uh, and there we can ask questions about doing something, right? So how would you do, what would you do differently and so on. But then uh, very often uh, people have their questions are not that much about doing, but their questions can be more about is it the right job they are doing, for example, in general, or is it their professional pathway? Is it So it could be much more questions on the, uh, identity level or purpose level where people are questioning uh, you know like what would I like to achieve or what I'm what am I doing you know with, with my professional role and I think there it's very much important to have this awareness when asking questions so actually what are you trying to achieve and where people are at that moment and I think this awareness also helps to, to understand what you really want to ask. And, and I think in, in the workshop, uh, sometimes I felt people were even surprised by some questions coming up because they may ask uh, a very technical question, you know, but uh, sometimes they would get a question back from us, which is maybe a little bit more on, on, on them, about themselves and their identity and, uh, I think um, that was surprising, but I think that helped people to move a little bit, you know, one level up from just doing to more maybe being and reflecting your own identity as a trainer. Yeah. Maybe an example, Domago, would be, for example, very often we ask questions about what did you learn, especially if you have a, an exercise before and then you want to come to the point and or maybe you have a learning objectives behind and you want to... Uh, in a way, really, that like you want. And I say, when I said you want, it's all a little bit like your intention. Uh, and it also, we have to be aware uh, whose objectives are that. Is it our objectives or their objectives? But that's a, even a bigger, bigger story. I think coaching mindset can also help us a lot because in the coaching mindset and in coaching work, you are on the client's agenda. You're not on your own agenda. And I think that's maybe where training and, and coaching roles sometimes clashing. But... Uh, Talk about the question about what did you what did you learn? That can that is usually very um, individually directing, you know, the, directing parts of the group, directing members in the group. Uh, what did you learn in this simulation exercise? What did you learn? So actually, and then we ask people more or less to reflect from a very individual perspective. But 
a different kind of question would be, and I think an example of a coaching approach would be where there is something happening in here and now in the training context, which is not necessarily even the exercise. It could be discussion after, it could be conflict in the group, it could be a situation that just simply happened there. And that will be the moment maybe where trainers can also take a kind of a kind of little kind of stop and saying what this situation is inviting us to learn, which could be a completely different kind of question. It's a question addressing the group as a whole. So not just individual learners. And for example, this kind of um, awareness can also broaden uh, uh, broaden the scope uh, of, uh, of, of things that you can uh, do. And uh, it's maybe one, uh, que- one uh, uh, criteria or maybe one thing to wonder is not, um, um, I think, Lamar, as you mentioned, helping professions. I was wondering, it's also also being useful, not just being helpful. So the question is also, um, what uh, what is useful uh, uh, here to ask? Uh, that can also be one of the uh, maybe questions that you can ask yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so thank you for sharing. Yeah, a lot of um, uh, practical tips and tricks, I would say. Yeah, but uh, I will maybe continue in this sense and lime on us, uh, if I can ask you, maybe uh, uh, for our viewers who are watching this uh, this uh, interview, what would maybe be the recipe or is do we have a recipe for implementing these skills actively? Yeah? What, what, what would you suggest? Huh? Well, you know, it's tricky to talk about recipes, but... If if you say about implementing skills, I think it's uh, trying. I think it's really trying and, and reflecting how it goes and being very conscious about what do you do. Um, so it's really a very experiential way. We all learn by by doing in a certain way. And I think many of us learn being with the group and listening to the group and asking questions also by looking how other colleagues are doing that. Yeah, so it very much depends, I think, what what school they are from, for example. And uh, so it, it, it really depends. And I think with Trainer Skills Workshop, uh, we were inviting people to take a, I would say, you know, a sneak peek into the coaching world and see what they can take from there and uh, what they can really, you know, uh, do back in, in their training practice and see how it works. Does it Do they achieve something else? Do they feel themselves a bit different when they ask these different questions on when they try that kind of more full presence of the group? Thanks, Lamarus, for bringing in this uh, difference between doing and being. Uh, because very often we, we, we think of trainers uh, in terms of skills, in terms of doing, in terms of methods, you know, toolboxes. We need to know lots of uh, things to do, uh, even to draw nicely on flip charts. So lots of skills. Uh, and in coaching as well, I think if you look at the coaches, they also need to have a number of skills, number of coaching tools, methods. In that sense, there, it's not a difference, but maybe there's a little bit more greater awareness in the coaching world that people will say you cannot just do coaching, you have to be a coach. So basically meaning that uh, maybe building what Limonas was saying, it's not only about what you're doing, but actually it is from which inner place are you doing it? Um, and sometimes really the, 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 it's not the quality of intervention there is a defining itself, like quality of question, quality of exercise. It is really from which inner place and from which inner quality of yours you are proposing this intervention. So, uh, and, and that you can check with yourself. For example, uh, you can try out with different groups exactly the same method, exactly the same instruction, but try to sense inside from which inner place are you giving this instruction, from which inner place are you proposing this question, from which inner place are you you, uh, suggesting this exercise. And the moment, and you can see uh, where, which one actually has the the greater impact. And that's, I think it's very interesting uh, exercise to check, okay, what's my uh, 
in the coaching we would call it coach position or coaching stance, but I guess in the trainer's world would be okay. So where do I stand innerly uh, as a trainer? Yeah, thank you both for for sharing. Um, I'm also interested. This Corona pandemic uh, brought us a lot of changes. So uh, you both had the experience of having this uh, training course on uh, coaching, both offline and online. Hmm? So mm-hmm. I'm interested maybe to talk a bit more about this online part. So how is to implement this coaching mindset and techniques in terms of uh, presence and relationship in the online environment? Uh, so I don't know, Lyman, ask if you want to maybe kick off. Mm-hmm. I think there was no very uh, special recipe on doing that, but it was a lot about the qualities we were talking during during this podcast. So it it was a lot about, first of all, us ourselves being present, uh, you know, fully listening uh, for people, also thinking, you know, what we want to ask and where we want to bring the group and, and reflecting what's happening with the group um, every day. And I think, yeah, we, I don't think we had some special special recipe really, but uh, I think what we figured out that the qualities taken from the coaching field, they were there present in, in, in residential, but actually just by learning and doing the second and the third workshop, we felt that we're probably bringing more of these qualities. And even if it's online, uh, I think maybe it was even like paying extra effort to really show these qualities of being fully present and we're inviting people to do the same. And I think that's probably the biggest difference that when someone is connecting online to a training, uh, they will have a lot of disturbances around them. Or they might be used to participate in a different way. They might be used that someone just you know, talking like a radio in the corner and and that's it. So that is why for us was important to have it very practical. Immediately people would go into pairs and they would do exercises on practicing active listening, for example, uh, practicing coaching skills from the very beginning because then people understood, okay, it's about them. It's about the way of trying things out. Um, and also it's about full presence in the workshop and i had a feeling we managed to achieve that and uh, we had some cases that you know people were dropping out and maybe this was also one of the reasons that there were too many disturbances around and maybe people chose to do something else instead and maybe that's 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 for a better and i think people who managed to really be fully present uh, take part i think they gained also the most and maybe one more thing to add we were trying to we we're trying last year in general different kind of formats and with this workshop we basically have one week of meetings with one day in the middle for individual learning or for participants to connect to each other and practice with each other but f- i think f- what i felt that when people enter the workshop they get focused and then we kind of manage to keep that energy throughout the week i have a feeling if we would make just one meeting in a week and then we stretch it to one month it would be very difficult to contain that energy and and and, and feeling of each other so i felt for that particular workshop this was good way of doing it mm-hmm. Yeah, thank you, Darko. Maybe anything to add to what Lyman has said? Well, I, not so much in that sense. I can just reflect a little bit of my experience of this one year of uh, Zoom life and Zoom uh, trainers and coaching work. And I think one, um, it took me a while to find, I think, to find my my place there. I think it's uh, it was not just automatic uh, that actually I was. Uh, and it's not only about technical and mastering the the technical side of it, but really to find your place um, exactly from where do you listen and and how do you connect to people um, through through your screen. Um, I think one interesting thing it's different than in the residential seminars is um, 
uh, so one thing is actually for sure people are one click one click away from leaving, which I think is, it brings in a, a, an interesting uh, interesting uh, dynamics also more freedom uh, to the group. But at the same time, it's uh, also the fact that people are zooming in from uh, from their uh, from their environment. They bring so much more information uh, with them immediately than uh, than in the in the regular, let's say, residential course where we are all sitting together in a hotel room. So you know, you see immediately pictures on the wall. You see the context. You see lots of uh, contextual, cultural symbols. Uh, yeah, you see l lots of. Uh, I think people bring much more. Uh, this way immediately. So this this connection is already there. So you don't have to wait for a couple of days, you know, for for layers to uh, to peel. Uh, but this is this is uh, already already present. And that I think it's an advantage of uh, this online work. Mm. Uh, and um, you are referring a lot to the trainings you have been implementing in the past uh, years uh, with the uh, coaching team. So maybe I'm wondering, uh, what is the impression of trainers who participated in these trainings? Uh, uh, what was their instant feedback on the, the coaching techniques and mindset? Uh, maybe if you can share with us briefly, what were the main impressions? Uh, maybe Lime on us if you want to start. Yeah, actually, the last workshop had... Uh, really overwhelmingly positive uh, evaluation um, and people appreciated that immediate connection with practice so it was not just theoretical it was not just presenting different theories about listening or asking questions but it was straightforward to try out things and also people appreciated really that there were demonstrations of methods, but also I think they they could also observe the 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 presence of us and 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 the way we approach the content and the group itself so but people appreciated really that it it was practical and it was this kind of integral, so we don't really talk about the approach, but we demonstrate the approach throughout the workshop. Mm -hmm. Maybe one thing to this integral that Lima was mentioning, I think it's also very important to mention that there are many different schools of coaching uh, and lots of schools of coaching, they would tell you, okay, a coaching session should look like this uh, or this is important part. Um, what, what, I think maybe one of the core beliefs uh, uh, where we stand and where we built in the in the workshop itself is not to say okay this is there is a one school one theory so basically we really take quite integral uh, I would say quite also eclectic uh, approach um, taking some of the really best parts from different coaching schools uh, so we don't speak about one. Uh, coaching school one approach, but and I think that's much more in line with 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 quality in coaching, but also quality in training. So basically, you cannot just do the same with whatever group comes there, or you know you have your favorite method, and whatever groups come, you do your favorite method or your favorite question. So you really need to adjust, uh, and then you know having this variety of uh, perspectives, I think, can be just uh, a good place to grow. Yeah, uh, thank you so much, uh, Darko, and thank you so much, Simon, for this interview. Uh, thank you for sharing all of the um, uh, tips and tricks and uh, interesting insights, I think, for the community of practice and trainers. We can just hope that, uh, you know, everyone will get the um, uh, opportunity to participate in this kind of trainings to um, learn more and to, to uh, improve their skills as well. So thank you for this. And uh, yeah, uh, hope to see you soon uh, somewhere huh? uh, on some of the training courses or in Europe. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching this interview. If you have enjoyed it and want to find out more about uh, opportunities for trainers, please go and visit the Salto Youth uh, webpage uh, where you can find more about uh, Trainer Skill Workshop, uh, Bridges for Trainer, Comets, or some other opportunities which are offered for trainers. Uh, you can also follow Salto Training and Cooperation on their Facebook page or, as well as on Twitter page. So, good luck and uh, thank you so much for watching us. Uh, hope to see you soon somewhere around Europe. Bye!